In this video series, we talked so far about 23 shots out of 24 and today is the last episode of this series where we're going to talk about the most important shot there is in pool. In the last episode of this series, we're going to talk about the most important shot there is in pool, which is the following. Yes, you saw right. What we're going to talk about today is just a stop shot. Well, why is a stop shot so important in pool? Because the stop shot, if you're a beginner or a more advanced player or whatever skill level you are, the stop shot is always the most reliable shot regarding position play. This means no matter if you're having a straight in shot or a shot with an angle, if you're able to play a perfect stop shot, you will know 100% where the cue ball is going to end. First of all, let's play, uh, let's talk about how you can execute a stop shot. And uh, there are many factors, or to be precise, three different factors we're going to talk about. And then we're going to use the stop shot with an angle on the object ball to show you how you can calculate or see with the tangent line how the stop shot uh, is going to lead you to a certain line. First of all, three different factors for a stop shot. Uh, the first factor is the distance to the object ball. The further you are away or the closer you are away from an object ball makes a difference. The second factor is, of course, how low or high you're hitting. Of course, if you want to play a stop shot, you always need to hit a bit below center, but you can actually hit as low as possible. And of course, the speed that you're playing the shot with is also a big, uh, makes a big difference in the stop shot. So first of all, what is important for a stop shot is that if you're playing a stop shot, let's pretend this is the cue ball. The cue ball shouldn't roll forward. The cue ball shouldn't draw back. The cue ball should slide when it hits the object ball and then and only then you will play a stop shot. So I'm going to play the nine ball without any object ball first and you just analyze where I'm hitting and what happens with the nine ball. You can see I'm hitting as low as possible here. and I was hitting very soft. As you can hopefully see in the cameras, the nine ball was uh, having backwards rotation here. And just here it began to slide for just a short time and then it began, began to roll forward. And that's because I was hitting as low as possible. This means I have a draw shot first, but at the same time I was hitting very, very soft. This means the backwards rotation was lost just immediately cue ball was sliding and began to roll forward. So if an object ball would have been here, we would have played a stop shot. If an object ball would have been here, then it was just a rolling cue ball. So again, I'm hitting as low as possible, but I'm hitting harder now. And you can see now the uh, nine ball in this case uh, was having backwards rotation until here it began to slide and then from here on it began to roll forward. So let's actually play a real shot here and show you how this would look in action. So let's take the nine ball and use a stop shot here. And I'm going to show you my favorite option how to play a stop shot first, which is always hitting as low as possible and just adjusting the speed. So just watch how low I'm actually hitting actually maximum low here and we almost had a perfect stop shot now if we're deciding okay we don't want to hit maximum low we want to hit a bit higher just a bit below center of the cue ball we have to hit uh, way harder now because we don't want uh, a forwards rotation we want a sliding cue ball and if you just hit a bit below center, then you have to hit at the same time harder. But this poses a bit of a problem. So watch what I'm doing now. You can see it's just a bit below center now. And here you saw the problem. Now the cue ball followed uh, a lot more than before because I didn't have a perfect sliding cue ball. 
because the cue ball had a bit of forwards rotation. This means I uh, would have need to hit a bit harder or a bit more below center. So let's try it again. Just hit a bit below center, hitting really hard. And again, I had a bit of forwards motion on the cue ball. And this is the problem if you're playing your stop shots by just hitting a bit below center. It's just so much more difficult to execute because you have to hit really hard compared to that really soft stop shot if you're hitting as low as possible. All right, now let's talk about the tangent line. Because when you're playing a stop shot, the cue ball will always follow the tangent line. This means we have a ghost ball here that's basically here. And if the ghost ball hits, the nine ball with a stop shot. This means with no forwards or backwards rotation, then the tangent line is always 90 degree from the ghost ball. This means we're taking this line from the ghost ball 90 degree to this line and then we know the cue ball will go towards this line here on the rail. And this is actually not depending on which angle you exactly have. That's why it's so reliable. No matter if you're here with the cue ball or here with the cue ball. If you have a sliding ball, then the cue ball will always go to this point on the rail. So let's show you with this angle first. Cue ball hit here on the rail. Of course, it depends a bit on how thick or thin you're hitting the nine ball in the pocket. This changes the tangent line a bit, of course, because you're playing the nine ball to a different spot. And now let's play the same shot from here with way more angle. And you can see the cue ball travel to the exact same point. Of course, if you have a bit of follow, a bit of draw on it, then it changes and of course, um, if you're hitting the nine ball thick into the pocket, then the tangent line will go a bit more towards here. If you're hitting the nine ball thin into the pocket, the tangent line will go a bit more towards here. So this is actually the foundation for your position play very often. If you know, this is for example our next ball, doesn't make any sense. But if you know, okay, I have to get position for this ball, then you know the tangent line will bring me into that ball then you know you have to draw the cue ball. And have a very easy shot on the next ball. So very important to remember the different factors for a stop shot are how low you're actually hitting. The lower you hit, the easier you can hit. The speed, of course, the harder you hit, the longer the cue ball will slide and the lower you hit, the softer you can hit. And of course, the distance. Remember in the beginning, if the balls are very close to each other, you can hit very soft, but uh, the nine ball began to roll right here. So the further you are away, the lower you hit or the harder you have to hit or a combination of both. And use the tangent line to have a reference where the cue ball will go. Then you can deviate from that line. And that's it for the last episode of this series. Okay, guys, that's it the last episode of this series, of the December series. I must say, I'm a bit sad, but at the same time, I'm a bit happy because uh, it was really a lot of work that went into those 24 videos. My cameraman and I were working so many hours. Uh, the problem was that the table just came in uh, mid-November. Then my cameraman had to go into quarantine uh, just I think one or two weeks before the series started. So uh, we basically had five videos finished on 1st of December. And from there on, it was working the whole night, the editing. So first of all, I want to say a huge thank you to my cameraman who uh, offered this amazing views uh, that you had in all those videos. And he also did some uh, editing on the computer. So without him, this wouldn't have been possible. So a huge thank you to my cam cameraman. And uh, maybe we will see him in some future videos. Well, not him especially, but his view. I think it was a really, really uh, nice extra for this video series. Series, by the way. Now I hopefully can pronounce it wrong. It's video, video series. I will remember that hopefully. 
Another thank you, of course, goes out to my patrons because uh, obviously all of this wouldn't be possible without my patrons. Uh, this whole series, I didn't, wouldn't even be here in this studio because uh, without my patrons, I would never made the step to rent an apartment, get my own table. So uh, a huge thank you to my patrons. So if you enjoyed this series, this uh, episode, uh, whatever, my whole videos in general, then I know I'm telling you all the time about Patreon. But uh, if you want to support me, then uh, please head over to Patreon. There are a lot of cool things you can get. Um, there are drills, there are bonus videos. Uh, for example, also bonus videos for this series. Uh, I also did a, a video where I was uh, doing half an hour of a training session here with live commentary where I'm telling you stories. There's a playing ability test, uh, mental podcasts about the mental game and a lot of stuff and this really helps me making these videos and doing all of this because as you know I'm doing YouTube videos and uh, I'm doing this for full time and the problem is I'm very dependent on views. This means the more views I get and the more people watch those ads that you see just like this ad for example. Thanks for watching this ad if you just watched it. So, so I'm very dependent from YouTube, from the views, by uh, putting a lot of ads into the videos and trying to get as many views as possible. So if you just want to support me uh, with any amount, head over to Patreon and maybe think uh, about joining the $1 tier. That's enough. If 1% uh, of you watching right now would join, this would really help me out because I'm planning a lot of cool stuff for the next year. I want to buy additional equipment, new cameras, new lighting, a flat screen, doing live streams, uh, doing new series. So a whole lot is in plan but of course this costs money so if you want to say thank you then just head over to patreon all right i think there's nothing else to say i hope you enjoyed the whole series uh, it was a lot of fun producing this but also a lot of work and uh, yeah i think the quality was uh, above everything else that was uh, on this channel before so uh, yeah i wish all of you uh, a merry christmas a happy new year I hope you stay safe. I know Corona is uh, currently a huge problem in the world. So stay safe and hopefully next year all of us can play pool again and have a lot of fun and travel to tournaments and maybe we will meet at some tournaments uh, in the US. I don't know. But uh, yeah, I think that's it for today. So a huge thank you to everyone out there who is a subscriber, who is supporting me, who is watching, to all the people who constantly like the videos and uh, commented. So, a huge thank you basically to everyone. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. See you in the next year with fresh new content. And as always, of course, see you at the next lesson. Take care. The episode of this series on the 24th of F December. That's how you get skills up. 24th of December. That's how you get skills up. 24th of F December. That's how you get skills up. That's how you get skills up. That's how you get skills up.